been on the cutting edge of a lot of interesting technology. Uh, uh, we were talking about some of the historic cars out there. And uh, one of the cars uh, was a, the Mark III that we're familiar with. It was the first one that comes standard with anti lock brakes. And it, it was in 1970, 69 was the original. In 70 it became standard. It was the first car I had with a standard option. Uh, and it was a, it just had a little bit of those pedals. And then a huge thing inside the engine compartment that can promote all these things. Uh, that never quite went right anyway, but whatever. Uh, the point was that it went was that luxury brands tend to be on that cutting edge of technology and define what becomes you know, standard for almost everybody later. Whereas before you would have to pay an extra, you know, 10 cents to go to the movie theater that had an air conditioning. Now all the prices are the same for all of them and they all have air conditioning because you would never go see a movie with air conditioning, right? So the, the premium suddenly becomes a standard. And where do you see that movement? I mean, I mean that could be a point of interesting discussion over the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of talk about autonomous driving with cars at the moment, and a lot of investigation in that. And for sure, you know that it's going to happen at some point. Uh, but already we're seeing functions that are autonomous, you know, small functions within the automobile. So you know, th this can be a point of helping the designer can create new ideas about the interior space and what we use it for inside. You know. So uh, it's, it's an exciting time of you know, new innovations which are really going to inform the designs going forward. Renee, what do you think the next standard luxury is going to be in the design of the new architecture? I mean, what is yeah, architecture is, is, is obviously different. Automobile design, so it's not so easy to peg it. But I think that uh, for me, it's not so easy to peg it. But I think that uh, it's interesting to think about uh, luxury in architecture, and and we do also have smart buildings, and we think about automation and all kinds of things like that. You know, you can control your home uh, while you're traveling in Japan. You know, these kinds of things, which to some degree are equivalent. But I think at the end of the day. Uh, you know, these things that we all understand as luxury, you know, uh, high quality of materials. And, and so there's this balance. Uh, and some people tend to uh, weigh in more on the sort of quality that you can touch and feel. And, and there's others that can, you know, simply appreciate uh, uh, highly developed uh, house. That's, that's very technologically smart. So, I mean, I think it's a combination, but I think that, um, that you know, probably it's something that is, that is uh, being considered, you know, as, uh, as kind of like what's more important. There's a, there's a movement in, in industrial design, automotive technology, that it is about Extent luxury is the, about the ability to make your unique version of a product. You can do the specialization of, of the equipment you put into it, or it can, and it's never going to go into the realm of design. You'll be able to create kits of parts that you can make and match for your particular car, and you'll pick out an example uh, and, uh, and then tweak it so that you make it yours, so that that exclusivity. In a horde of you know, seven billion on the planet, there's only really one of you, and then there's only one link that belongs to you. I see that to a certain extent in architecture, um, and that, that is one of the definitions of luxury that you need this uh, the design. Um, but the compatibility and the portability of that design is your realm, whereas I'm beginning to see the adaptability becoming an issue in, in our realm. And, and that's how I see some of these parallels uh, with the idea of luxury, that becoming the next thing that we're going to be looking at, being able to really change and modify our spaces. Um, uh, where it falls go up, falls go down, spaces open up, spaces goes down. That kind of, of, of dynamic architecture, you call it what I've seen is happening, 
I see boat design, the boat industry, where you have decks that open out and become, you know, walls and the halls that become decks, and, and that can be a sort of transformative uh, effect. Do you see that from a design point of view? Is that what you're hearing the, is the next thing? Because we're here talking about design and about luxury and about exclusivity, and what is the, the next thing? Let's look towards the future. Yeah, I, I see both faces of that. I think, um, obviously, Customers can bring a lot to their birth of these things in, just on their phone um, of settings and preferences and information. But equally, I think um, the luxury customer wants a curated, orchestrated uh, object of desirability that they don't have to stress about. And I think um, I think it's a look. It's it's a little bit of both that's going on, and uh, we've got to be very careful about how we tackle that going forward. I think that, um, I don't know, what I think is, is happening is that we've lost touch to some degree with the natural. So that, like by example, I live in Coconut Grove. And when the weather is cool enough and I can turn off the AC and I can open up the house and I can wake up and hear the birds, that to me is like a really phenomenal, kind of magical, mysterious, mysterious phenomenon, which you don't usually peacocks not, in your area. I have huge numbers of peacocks and they wake me up every morning. That says not a pleasant experience. And, no, but the, the good thing about the peacocks is, that, and the good thing is that I don't mind waking up fairly early in the morning, is that it makes me feel in touch with the natural world. And, and I think that, that to the extent that we continue to use technology and, and design in order to overcome the natural world, um, what ends up happening is we have a harder and harder time feeling connected, and that, that this this idea of being connected virtually instead of physically is is to me a very disturbing aspect of the evolution. So I think that the luxury is really more than anything the ability to put a person in touch in some form or another with, with something that's still tied to the natural world. Because I think it makes us feel more human, I think it makes us feel more emotionally connected, and I think that it has a sense of luxury because we live in a fairly alienated universe. I mean, you, especially here in Miami, you go from the air-conditioned building to your air-conditioned car, you sit in traffic for hours, you have a car that's going to go 160 miles an hour, and you cannot move past 15. Um, you're, you're constantly feeling trapped. You go outside, and, and the worst bane of my existence, I have to say, is the leaf blower. <laughs> because I have a lot of vegetation in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it used to be people had rakes, and it took exactly the same amount of time to rake the leaves as to blow them all over tarnish. <laughs> but now you, you, what I'm getting at is that there's a constant increasing fascination with technology that unfortunately, in some respects, because I love technology, in some respects, the common sense of it doesn't translate. And I think that with the vehicles, I think that the safety features are phenomenal. The fact that everything can be, like you say, more mysterious is really phenomenal. Uh, a car that will stop itself if you're not paying attention is an amazing concept. Uh, and I think that it's going to be a tremendous luxury to have an autonomous vehicle. Because you'll be able to choose whether I want to drive it myself or do something else while I'm getting where I need to go. So I think those are all tremendous advancements. Uh, but not all advancements are necessarily positive. And I think that luxury especially needs to be tied into that kind of special experience that you were talking about. That if I can afford it, and I can own it, and it actually makes my life better, that to me is the best form of luxury. If I'm just going to have a hugely decorated, softer than normal, whatever, that I don't use anyway, well, why do I do that? It's not an interest to me. And I think that's why luxury is changing. Because I think the luxury is really tied to people's experience and the thing that, that the demographics and the age groups and the cultures are defining for them each independently what the luxury is really all about. Well, I want, to, I want to begin by thanking the panel. Uh, it's been a great uh, bit of discussion. And I